What's going on everybody? Thank you for stopping by. My name's Scott and today we're going to discuss why I made my decision to live a MGTOW lifestyle as a young man in his 20s. So I think it's really important that I provide you guys some context into my life and why I ended up making the decision to live a MGTOW lifestyle at such a young age. And the reason why I think it's important to give some context is because every man's life ends up on a certain direction based on the decision he makes or the decisions of the people that he surrounds himself with. So I'll just go over some things with you guys. So I'm a young man. I'm in my mid-20s. I currently live in San Diego, California. It's a very liberal town. And unfortunately, based on my experience, wherever liberal liberalism is, it's fucked up. Society is just fucked up. That's just based on my personal experience. And I'll go over that more in detail later in the video. But um, some some life experience. I'm a single father. I am actively participating in my son's life. Fortunately, thank fucking God. Because usually when it comes to child custody situations, the mother has the primary caregiver role in that situation. Fortunately for me, I fought my ass off. I went through the family court system down here in Southern California and I was able to establish my paternity rights and my parental rights over my son and and I've been involved in his life ever since he was born. Um, my son was born when I was 21 years old. Um, I made the very stupid decision to involve myself with the woman that I had no business involving myself with. I was 21 years old. She was 29 years old. She was much older than me. I thought I was hot shit because I had like, I had got this older woman and so on and so forth. And I thought I was hot shit. But little did I know that this individual appeared to have some some ulterior motives behind why she was associating with me. Um, I had a really good job. I was making really good money for someone my age. I think it's... I don't think most young men at the age of 21 were doing what I was doing and living the lifestyle that I lived. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure this individual had some ulterior motives behind why she was associating with me. Long story short... She ended up getting very, she, or she ended up getting pregnant very early on in our relationship, and that, to be honest with you, that's both our faults. Um, I shouldn't have been doing what I was doing. I should, I shouldn't have been having unprotected sex with this individual. She had told me she was on birth control, and I'm willing to bet that she never was, and that that was just a fabrication altogether. Okay, so fast forward. Throughout the pregnancy, the relationship, I started to see some serious red flags regarding the relationship. And these ulterior motives that I just mentioned started to present itself within this individual. And then it just went all downhill from there. Long story short, prior to the child being born, um, we ended up in family court. This individual was trying to basically keep me away from this child prior to the child even being born okay so we went through this whole process restraining orders were filed um like parental proceedings for who could have like full legal custody and like and no visitation were being filed before the child was even born okay so this was my introduction to parenthood this is my introduction of what it is like to be a man in the paternal role in in the world. And at this time, like I said, I was really young. I was 21 years old. I had never knew that that family court was a thing. I was too young. I was too immature. I lacked the life experience to understand that this is how men and women or just human beings in general deal with personal um, personal breakups with each, with each other in a legal way. I just, I never knew, I never knew this was an actual thing. And I learned very quick 
what family court entailed. Accusations were made. Unfortunately, when it comes to women and it comes to children, the family court system does not take accusations very lightly. They kind of err on the side of caution. And I believe that's to protect the children and protect women from potential harm, despite the fact that there's no evidence showing it. Like that could that could lead you to be. Um, how do I explain it? There's no there's no like overwhelming ev evidence where like a jury could convict you of those allegations. They err on the side of caution. They go with the safer option and then they allow you to prove your innocence later on down the line. So that's exactly what I had to go through. A temporary restraining order was uh, was issued and it took me six months upwards of $60,000 in court costs, no, in legal fees, to prove that those accusations that were made against me were false. I had to prove my innocence that these accusations were false, pay for all those attorney's fees, wait, go through a huge ordeal, wait six months of my entire life stressing about this entire situation, and then once that was done, then I could see my child. To be honest with you, I don't think most men my age at that time, at 21, would have gone through the shit that I had to go through just to be an active parent in their child's life. And I really think that's important for you guys to know because that's, that's my life experience. And my life experience has led me to the place that I'm at right now this this like i said this this was this happened when my child was born so this was years ago um ever since these family court proceedings that happened prior to my son being born finalized it has been nothing nothing but a shit show regarding the co-parenting relationship and it's really opened my eyes to how broken homes function and what I mean by that is when a man and a woman have a child they separate and they they both have active roles in in the child's life in one way or another whether that's physical visitation or legal decision making it's just been an it's been an active shit show and I'm not going to go too much into detail to that because that's personal stuff and I don't want to bash my son's mother but that has really opened up my eyes to to what men have to go through when I was going through this situation I I started reaching out to other men much older than me by the way I wasn't really associating myself with other 21 year old young men because I didn't think they um, could relate to me on a personal level because most of them or none of them were going through what I was going through so I started talking to other men um, mentors I guess you could call them and I would just hear these shit stories, man, of how men were getting absolutely destroyed financially, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. They were just getting destroyed in the family court system, whether that was because of divorce, divorce settlements or accusations that were made, their personal reputations were destroyed. They lost jobs because of what was going on in their personal life. The amount of money they were losing. It was just, I had never heard, out of all these men that I spoke to regarding family court, divorce proceedings, and and co-parenting, I had never heard one good story of how everything ended up hunky-dory. Everyone was happy. It was a mutually agreed upon situation. And that everything was going well. So that just really opened my eyes to how our society works when it when it comes to men and the the relationship between men and women when it comes to the relationship between men and women in co-parenting. So the reason why I'm telling you guys all this stuff is not to bash my son's mother or for you to pity me. If you're a young man 
in the American society, you need to understand the potential consequences of having a child out of wedlock, having a child in wedlock, and what could potentially come down the line later on in life in the event that your relationship runs sideways. These are real life consequences. And I'm not the only one that has ever gone through this. I'm not I'm not saying that. Like I said, I'm not trying to garnish or garner penny for pity from you guys. This is real life shit that happens on a daily fucking basis. Okay? So if I was a young man in 2020 and I could relive my life all over again, I would I would not have sex with a woman until I was absolutely sure that I was going to spend the rest of my life with her. And I knew for a fact that she was not crazy in, in any way, shape, or form. Okay. So what's the likelihood of you finding a woman like that? I'm serious. What is the likelihood of you finding a woman like that in this society? I think it's slim to none. That, that's just my opinion. My suggestion to any young man in this society, the American society, is for you to speak with other older men that have gone through bad relationships or divorces and, and hear from them what it's like to go through the family court system. The purpose of this video is to prevent any young man from making a terrible decision in his life that he can't get himself out of. Because all it takes is one bad decision, whether that's knocking a girl up or even involving yourself with the wrong woman, that could lead you into family court. And when you're in family court, you do not have control over your life. The judge has control over your life. That judge, whether it's a man or the woman, has the right to make decisions over your life, whether you like it or not. And I honestly think that most young men don't understand the severity of that situation. So you need to take, you need to be um, very cautious when making decisions regarding your personal or romantic relationships. Because I'm telling you, based on personal experience, you don't have, or you have no idea the context of family court and what it entails. And the, another reason why I'm making this video is because I've watched a lot of red pill videos on YouTube, a lot of MGTOW videos on YouTube, and it appears to me that most of the gentlemen making these videos, they seem to be much older than I am, much older than I am. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think it, it might be a little more difficult for a young man in his, in his late teens or early 20s to identify with an older man because they might have not experienced life in the same light that the that, uh, that older man has. So I would strongly recommend that you reach out to older gentlemen. Talk to them. Get their personal experience. Get their perspectives on things and try to see if it if if that if that advice is good and and you can personally relate to it because I'm promise you the last thing you want to do is end up in a family court situation where you're fighting over a child or a relationship or a mutually agreed upon home or even even mutual property that shit you will you can go to family court over stupid shit like who gets mutual property so in summary to this long random rant it's, it's really important that if you're a young man, you need to, you need to think before you make decisions. That, that goes without saying it, but we currently live in a society that does not value the paternal role in a parenting situation. Society seems to, in this society, men are second class citizens. And I know people will say otherwise, but actions show that we are second-class citizens. So when you make decisions, 
you need to think about what you're doing and what are the potential consequences. And if you can't come up with a legit answer to that question, I strongly suggest that you find some strong men and have them be your mentors and run your ideas by them and see what they could possibly help with. Because there's there's things in this life that you are not aware of, and that's due to your your lack of life experience. And I would, and I want to save some young man from making a decision that could possibly ruin his entire life. My situation that I just explained could have went a lot worse. Like, let's just say I chose not to fight in the family court proceedings. I most likely wouldn't have been allowed to see my son. I would have been destroyed absolutely destroyed in the child support system I would have been forced to pay all the child support to the mother and whatever money I owed to the state of California because of welfare and stuff like that because single mothers have excuse me single mothers have access to all types of welfare it's ridiculous you you like I said, you need to you need to talk with other older men and see what they went through to prevent yourself from getting in that situation. So I, I apologize. I've been all over the place uh, regarding this topic. This is my first like vlog or personal video that I've ever made, so it's not like my strong suit. Hopefully I'll get better at it. Um, but if you guys have any questions, just drop a comment. Or I'll leave my email. If you if you want to talk about something, what's going on in your life, I can I'll provide you some some personal advice. Um, well, thank you for watching this video, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you want some more to to watch future con content. I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you and have a good day.